and he turns to her and he goes, ah, I like a little spunk in a girl. And I'm like, that job security, right? Raising. Of course, obviously. <laughs> yeah, of course. It's so disgusting. <laughs> I remember being on a job once and the show was a Tuesday airing show and they kept doing my SIG off as see you next Tuesday. And I was like, guys, I can't say see you next Tuesday. <laughs> like, do you not know what that means? And, like, and they like didn't get it for the first like, three script drives. <laughs> Do you think that's <laughs> God awful movie 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because it's better than injecting Lysol. Sometimes, some weeks more than others, <laughs> to be honest with you. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. So, you know what's a great movie to not force a guest into watching? <laughs> <laughs> this movie. Yeah. Hopefully we didn't make any guests watch this movie. <laughs> well, we're about to find out, I guess. But first, we have to turn to 900 miles to my northeast, where we'll find my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm fantastic, Noah. You know what's an amazing prank war? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so <sighs> speaking of which, we're also excited to welcome back a special guest masochist. Kara Santa Maria's Wikipedia page identifies her as, quote, science communicator, producer, journalist, podcaster, television host, and neuroscientist. Just like and only person I know target. that can throw in an oh yeah and on neuroscientist. I am very stoked, though, by the way, to see podcaster listed higher on the resume than that. It makes me feel really fucking good about my career choices. Uh, she's the host of Talk Nerdy and the co-host of The Skeptic's Guide to the Universe. Kara, welcome back. Hey, I'm not 100% thrilled to have had to watch that movie, <laughs> but I'm happy to be talking to you guys. Oh, boy, yeah, right. Like, you know, we once in a while, we watch movies that are at least not this bad. Although I will say, one time we watched a movie about a good guy protagonist kidnapping three women who are going to have a, an abortion and then forcing them to go through with the uh, the pregnancy. So this is also not the worst it's ever been. Oh, okay. That's so good. yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, that I, one had Robert Loja though. Right? It really it did. Did it have Robert Loja? Did all as right. Did its sequel. This one very much did not have <laughs> Robert Loja. But tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Allison's Choice. It's the story of a fetus that was super duper rooting for its unemployed teen mom to get an abortion <laughs> and how Jesus showed up and tried to ruin the whole fucking plan. <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this movie? So bad. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, no, sorry. correct. Sorry, formatting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, if you've been dating Pure Flix for a while, and it's time for all the crazy to come out. You <laughs> will love this movie. Look, we have made fun of 244 plus Christian films on this show. And I'm not going to lie. Sometimes there's a little voice back in my head that says, Oh, Eli, folk are just folk. Maybe don't find a 16th metaphor for what David A.R. White's forehead looks like. <laughs> this movie reminded me. Nope. You're good. Yes. You are right. fine. As yeah. many metaphors as you want. <laughs> I mean, usually I don't come away from these things mad at the gaffer, but God damn it, Dwight Lay, you should have known better. <laughs> All right. How dare you? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So now, like I said, we've watched worse movies than this. I got to ask Kara, have you watched worse movies than this? <laughs> oh, I don't know if I, gosh. Yeah, I wasn't do. really yeah, actively <laughs> comparing it the whole time I was watching it, but I did probably exclaim at least 400 times, this is the fucking worst movie I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't, I, maybe not, maybe yeah. not. The weird thing is, why was this on Amazon? Okay, oh. so here's the thing though, like Amazon is like 40% YouTube, right? Like 40% or something of the movies that are on Amazon are basically just YouTube. They they just make sure that the movie is movie length and that's it. Mm. And a lot of people don't realize that. They think that everything on Amazon that they're, you know, since it's a service that they pay to have is not yeah. going to be just user generated content, but a ton of it is. But this is also like weirdly 
And like, okay, it's not a high budget movie because right. they spent their whole budget on the CGI fetus. <laughs> they sure did. And then they shot the rest of it in one location. Yep. But it's not like a cheap movie. Like you can tell that they actually had like a real crew and they hired like acting class actors. Well, yeah, no, Dwight Lay is a legitimate gaffer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you could also tell, I mean, it's like, it wasn't like a garbage production. It was just a garbage film. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so this is something that you get used to when you watch Christian movies, like these bizarrely well-funded movies where they yeah. go to these churches and they say, you know, like, well, if you guys all put the money together, we can make a great movie about the evils of abortion. And so they have like plenty of money and they have people who actually know what they're doing, but then they have this script and these actors and, and, <laughs> and, and like, even like, you know, cinematographers that are like, Oh, well, I guess I'm never going to get legitimate work now, but I really <laughs> yeah. did need uh, this. You check. know what they should have done? They should have got Robert Loja as the CGI fetus and saved some money. <laughs> oh. <laughs> then it's my favorite movie. Yeah, right. Now you've ruined it for me. Birth me. I want you to birth me. <laughs> Come on, mommy. Reconsider. <laughs> All right. So, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst planned parenthood. Interior design. Okay. <laughs> First of all, in their break room, <laughs> this is crazy. They have one of those inspirational posters on the wall. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like corporate speak inspirational posters. Like, like there's not enough synergy to grab the low hanging fruit at this abortion <laughs> clinic. So they have stupid shit like that. Like think outside the box. No. Okay. Well, that's too much. But <laughs> But it's, it says <laughs> it a slow burn. That one That's was a, a thinker. You heard that <laughs> one. There's a bit yeah, of a, a delay. It took a there. second. It took a second. <laughs> you guys got there. But th the poster they actually have says potential. So first of all, fuck yes, you. Get yes. Out of here. Yeah, seriously. Might as well say viability as a business buzzword. <laughs> and just one other example of the decorating. They had me baffled throughout the movie. I couldn't stop thinking about this. There's an empty fish tank right. in the waiting room. That's the first thing I wrote down. <laughs> okay, I'm not crazy. Like, that's Why insane. Why is the fish tank empty? I have, yeah. a th I have a theory. They ran out of fetuses and needed something else to kill at some point, right? <laughs> they were like, they went after the turtles. Okay. I was thinking, like, maybe it's a metaphor, like... There's no fish, no Jesus in that air. I don't know. Oh, I couldn't stop okay. thinking about it. All right. But what the fuck? Who puts it empty? That's not appropriate. Like, Bobby from Queer Eye showed up and was like, I'm thinking we go vague, dark metaphor. <laughs> no what the fuck? Yeah, and to be clear, it wasn't an empty fish tank in the sense that it was just a glass, like, jar. It was a fully <laughs> designed fish tank with yeah. no water or with fish. With no water. Exactly. Right, like, right. Yeah. There were, like, rocks and, like, fake, you know, like, corals and shit in it. But there was no <laughs> fish or water. Really dark. Fucking weird one. Carrie, you got any best worsts? I mean, for me, this was the best worst advertisement for atheism I've encountered. <laughs> Personally. This just, this movie, like, and we'll get there, but Jesus is like the creepiest pedo you've ever encountered in your life. Or God, Jesus, I guess they go, they're go they going with like the traditional trinity in this yeah. one because he's like the same dude. And everything about this movie makes me like so happy that I left the church when I was like 15 years old. Mm. Yeah. Because if I hadn't then, and then I saw this movie, that would have been, you know, the straw. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think this movie have, will probably deconvert more people than it will, you know, convince to, what do they call Kill babies? That's what he says a lot, right? Yeah, right, yeah, exactly. That's the, I kill mommy's that's the babies. medical term. Yeah, kill, kill yeah. mommy's baby. Exactly. Mommy's babies, <sighs> yeah. Oh, no, here's, here's a really fucked up one for you, Kara. I'm, I'm going to blow your mind with this one. That actor that plays Jesus in that, that's Bruce Marciano, the, the writer and director of this film. He has a whole TV show called The Encounter where he plays creepy pedo Jesus and he just pops in and does this kind of shit. This no. is just like the movie version of that. No. Is he usually a janitor? He's yes. always something like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> maintenance -y. And he's he also ties into two other movies, yep. which we've the already encounter watched. The Encounter and The Encounter 2. <laughs> yep. Pedo Jesus has a cinematic universe that I can say for sure Noah and Heath are more familiar with than the Marvel Universe. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. So I had to, I switched this out at the last minute because I found this this morning and it was so goddamn amazing. I'm going with best worst line that I've ever encountered in an Amazon review. Ooh, bold. Okay. So the review is absolutely every bit as disgusting as you would expect a five star review on this movie to be. Arthur literally thanks his father for, quote, not letting his mother have an abortion when she was pregnant with him. Wait, in the review? Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, it is disgusting. But then he adds, and I love this so goddamn much, and I quote, read the one, and this is definitely Arthur's goddamn accent. Don't tell me this is an Arthur's <laughs> fucking accent. I got this dead ass on. Read the one star reviews and since who is behind them. <laughs> oh, it's the devil, isn't it, Arthur? It's the devil. I think he thinks it's the WHO. I think that who is WHO conspiracy. Uh, same difference. Same difference. Same difference six, for six, Arthur. Yeah, that's that's gonna, yeah Jews. Matter. He's talking about yeah, Jews. Exactly. Let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> and see, I, I took the easy road. I was going to go with best worst racism. Oh, oh yeah. It's I, that's weird. what I thought first. And then it's I was like, dang, weird. it's taken. <laughs> We've seen a lot of magical black best friends in our career with yep. Christian cinema, but this reaches like chicken any hate crime levels yes. of racism. Yeah. Agree. Yep. And and keep in mind, as you were going through all this racism, Bruce Marciano, Pedo Jesus, wrote all those lines. Just you he know, sure did. <laughs> picture them all coming out of his mouth. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Obviously, Arthur, the Amazon reviewer, is on to us, so we're going to need a second to reconfigure our satanic strategy. So we're going to pause for a quick break. When we come back, we'll dive into all the G-grade propaganda that is Allison's Choice. All right, everyone. Welcome to the first ever writer's room meeting for Allison's Choice. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Let's do it. Sorry. You okay? Sorry. I thought about a woman choosing. Yes. Well, that, that is very... Yeah. Scary. Yeah, maybe we should change the title. Oh, yeah, good idea. Let's no, definitely change the no, title. No, I, I look, we picked this title and we're sticking with it. So it's about a girl who's gonna get an abortion, but janitor God stops her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from the encounter and the encounter too. Great callback. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, everyone has seen those movies. Oh, absolutely. Everyone. Yes, yep. yes, exactly. And along the way, she meets an evil. Uh, uh, counselor? The doctor. Nurse. You know what? Let's go with all of them. I love it. Uh, mm -hmm. An evil counselor, then doctor, then nurse. Uh, but she's helped to see the light by her sassy black friend, whose name is... Yeah, Claire. Claire. No, I said black friend. Mammy. Uh, you know, still not racist enough. <laughs> Little too racist. Wow. Okay. Uh, Lucretia? Perfect. Perfect amount of racist, yeah. <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown and we're going to open up on a guy trying to guilt his girlfriend into fucking him but it's a Christian movie so they can't even use fuck euphemisms so. uh, I quit the movie I quit oh, the movie it was, faster than I ever quit the movie it was pretty pretty rough there was one line in here that I love though because at one point she goes oh god and he's like Oh, God, really? You're going to throw out an atheism slur like that? Get woke, okay? <laughs> oh, God. Also, in the middle of this really upsetting date rape scene, he says, what, do you think I'm stupid? Like, does she think you're so stupid that your cum works? That's not generally <laughs> how that <laughs> happens. Yeah, I couldn't really tell if she was not wanting to have sex without a condom or if she was just not wanting to have sex at all. But either way, it did feel like a G-rated rape scene. Yep. Yeah. But that's the Yepers, fucked up thing about that's it. That's what happens. Yeah, because they can't tell you what's going on because I think they go, they're going for the condom thing, right? But but they can't say a condom or penis or sex <laughs> or anything like that. So it really does feel like a date rape type scene. I wrote in my notes here, like, but yeah, she, she's telling you she doesn't think your dick is safe. She's known you longer than I have, but I feel the same way, bro. <laughs> I mean, also, this is a Christian movie, and based on what we're going to learn about the moral world of the people who made this movie, I don't know that they know that this is rape. They're just like, no, uh, they you know. They do not. Right, right. Oh, no, he has needs. 
That boy has needs. How dare she not fulfill his his male needs? Wow. Um, yeah. D- y- who the fuck knows, honestly, where this movie goes? Who the fuck knows? D- d- yeah. d- fucking Deshaun is a good guy in this movie. So who the fuck knows? All right. So now we get the whole opening montage, which is Juno, like the whole fucking movie. Right. Like, so we start off. She's she's driving down. OK, first of all, she's driving down the road. The camera is literally pointing directly at the sun through a dirty car window. <laughs> and the movie yep. just, it's just like, hey guys, just get used to it. It's not getting better than this. Seriously. My first note is, I can't see the movie. What's <laughs> I, like, this is real. I actually started to get up to close my blinds in my apartment. <laughs> but it was the movie just glaring in my eyes. The movie was doing that. It's so fucking stupid. It's also... A super weird tone shift, right? Because it plays the like Juno lady with a guitar music, which again is very, very rapid of a shift from a pressured sex in the back of a Honda Accord. Right? It's just like yeah, doodle doodle do. Yeah, right. So through this montage, we learn that she's pregnant and her boyfriend seems to be being a bit of a unhelpful douchebag about it. Yeah, but it's all in montage. Yeah, exactly. Fully montage, like music over top like minimal acting and a lot happens in this montage, like to the extent that I was a little worried that there would be no movie left. And I was right. <laughs> yes. Yes. You were right. That is I correct. I would have much rather the montage had been the movie. And this had been a montage at the end. Yes, exactly. Yes. They had it exactly fucking backwards. <laughs> but yeah, so the montage ends with her pulling up at an abortion clinic. Right. Oh, th- we need a button on these things like Pure Flix, Amazon. They need a button that you can just montage a shitty movie and it just like speed <laughs> through it. <laughs> the filter. Always like plays it. Wake Up Darling over it. I'm in. I'm yeah. in. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So she's going into the abortion clinic. She she checks Earth's fourth cell phone. Apparently, she does, it doesn't have any messages. Yes. Again, why are the phones always so out? The, this movie was not made in. 1837, why couldn't she have a phone that would have been modern by the standards of when the movie was made? This movie was made in 2015. 2015? Oh, wow. wow. And she's using like a sidekick. Yes. yes. She's, 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 she's using using Zach they were Morris's all? cell phone. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, so th- she goes into this abortion clinic waiting room where Basically, the entire goddamn movie is going to take place. Yes. Uh-huh. This is where we see the the empty fish tank for the first time, and everyone has a lot of notes on that. <laughs> <laughs> So confusing. I, I was, can't get it out of my head. It's the most salient part of the whole montage. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> All right. And so, okay, so then she's in the abortion clinic. The music starts to fade. The, the, the montage ends. We're about to meet Lucretia. The African American lady who gets the norm greeting at Planned Parenthood, apparently. <laughs> right? Oh, <laughs> this character is upsetting. Well, and by the way, oh. we can't even call this Planned Parenthood because that's like an insult to Planned Parenthood. Yeah, right. Like, right. Yeah. There is nothing mm. Planned Parenthood like about this abortion clip. I have so many things to say about how many laws they're breaking. <laughs> oh, like so it's many. It's like so HIPAA many. violation through. And through, like they have a <laughs> speaker so that they can say people's full names yes! outside of the clinic, facing yes! outwards to the street. Yes! So yes! illegal. Yes! They're like giving away personal information in front of a full waiting room. It's insanity. Oh my uh-huh. god! So yeah, so she goes up there and she's like, you know, I don't know what to put under father because you know I don't know if he'd want to be and this character Lucretia speaks up and she goes I always just leave the father part blank every single time I come here for an abortion I have eight punches with this one after this one I get a free one next <laughs> yeah. time on my card but, oh god this was just, yeah that was that was a rough intro oh it was bad it was like and it was all the exposition in like one moment so it was mm. basically like I'm a scared white girl who's never done anything wrong in my life and I don't know what to put on the form and then Lucretia's like I'm the sassy black character who's been here a hundred times. I can walk you through this, girl. Let me tell you about my trashy childhood. Oh, and you're just oh, like, no, no. No, please. No. <laughs> it's so bad. I was yelling at this like it was a scary movie. I was like, yes. no, no, please, please don't write those. <laughs> don't write those lines for that actress to read. Please. 
It's in digital <laughs> format. You can't escape them. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not just her. It's like in this world, sassy Lucretia is like, you know, kind of garnishes an eye roll from every single person. Yep. You know, yep. it's like, ooh, that's just Lucretia. Yeah, yeah. Well, right. Again, they all know her. She's a regular there. She's just arguing about her app card. She does that when she comes in. It's fine. <laughs> she's like taking selfies the whole time. She you is. Guys what was that? that? Like while she's waiting, she's bored. So she's just taking like duck face selfies on her phone. <laughs> yes, her yeah. pre-abortion selfie. <laughs> Fun fact about her pre-abortion <laughs> selfies. We will later see her phone. It does not have a front facing camera because <laughs> she is also. So, she, so she's just <laughs> examining her phone in the light occasionally apparently <laughs> and making duck faces yeah exactly yep. yeah. no but she takes a selfie inside of that happens in the oh, movie oh yeah yeah more than once oh, multiple like, selfies yeah hashtag not a mother's day ooh, ooh get out of here <laughs> <laughs> and now in addition to lucretia we're also going to meet miss glow Miss Glow, that's short for Gloria, but they were going for some Halo thing or something. Oh, you're right. God, I didn't pick up on any of that. Uh, you know, 245 of these fuckers <laughs> in and it all gets real obvious to you. So, so she is the concerned abortion receptionist that secretly wants to save Allison's fetus, right? But, but I'm confused by this because, like... She actually seems like the best actress in the film by far. Mm -hmm. She um, actually seems like a real character. Like, she's relatable. She's a little bit sort of not one-dimensional. But mm -hmm. then, and we'll get there, but she, when she sends a counselor, and I put that in heavy quotes, <laughs> the counselor that she sends is trying to talk Allison into having the abortion, right? I yeah. was not clear. It switched during the scene, right? Like, they started writing the scene, and they were like, fuck, which side are we on? We titled it Choice. Yeah, so I don't the title I don't really understand the motivation of Miss Glow. I bet you when she was reading her side, she was like, what's my backstory? Who's team <laughs> Because it's a little hard to tell. <laughs> yeah, and okay, and it starts off with this ridiculous goddamn line right here, right? So Allison's about to go sit down after she's turned in her abortion forms, and Miss Glow pulls her back, and she whispers to her, she says, I could lose my job for asking this, but... Are you sure? Like, no, yeah. you could you could lose your job for not yeah, asking you could that. Not she could have lost. You had you had to say that. <laughs> she has to sign a form and everything. I, I love the world that the Christians inhabit, where you walk into the abortion clinic and the nurse is like, "Great, strap her down. Let's not lose our jobs." <laughs> You sure about this? Too slow. Go. Yeah. All right. right. What? Count, oh. Countdowns are for other clinics, not here at Planned Parenthood. <laughs> um, and then, oh, God. And then, speaking of which, we meet the abortion Nazi nurse, the cat lady. Oh, you know what my favorite part about her is? They use the same B-roll every time she walks yes, down the hall. They do. Yep. It's like they only <laughs> shot her walking scene once. <laughs> Which means she was probably really bad at acting walking and they only got one thing. <laughs> but it's only from her knees down. Yep. We see it over and over again as she makes the long walk or some whatever it is. So yeah, she steps into the waiting room and she's like, feed me, Seymour. She holds the fucking bloody cleaver above her hand and the next girl goes back. She'll do this over and over again in the movie. I loved her so much. She was great. By the way, uh, every time someone goes back for an abortion, the movie plays identical music. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, the sad walking away music from the end of the Hulk. Yeah, exactly. All right. So, and, uh, all right. And tell me that we didn't all simultaneously crack up in this moment because so the one girl goes back to get her abortion. Allison's sitting there, and God. Starts VO and all over the place, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. This is when, yeah, this is when the VO starts. Yeah, God starts talking about like just God's voice cuts in to say, "Allison, I love you and your unborn baby." <laughs> but, but, but like, we're watching a very tight shot of Allison right now, and so we kind of assume that like the next guy over at the waiting room is saying all this shit at first, Yeah, you right? can't quite tell until it's, like, weirdly personal. And <laughs> yes. also, it's a little right. bit, like, a tacky. Like, because she's sitting there with, like, a semi-sad, but semi-just, like, spaced out look on her face. And then he's just like, 
nobody's ever loved you. Like, he, like, really, like, yeah. rubs some salt in her wounds. <laughs> right. He's like, your father didn't care. Right. <laughs> yes. a, lot of, a lot of negging going on there. And then at the end, he keeps telling her, I love you, Allison, over and over again, like he's waiting for her to say it back. <laughs> and I am fascinated to know what Kara's experience in this moment was, because it pans up, and it's the janitor that me, Heath, and Noah recognized from the encounter in the encounter too. But for Kara's experience, it was just like, oh, that's the janitor saying that to her. No, it wasn't even right away. It took... It took him talking for another like two whole sentences before I was like, that's the same voice. Yes. <laughs> like, oh, like the God voice, like the voice of God, like they would call it in, you know, cinema, like the voice of God is actually supposed to be God. And I think they're trying to make this janitor God. Like it was a whole like calculus, you know, I was the meme with like, you know, the fucking algebra like, yeah. my head for a minute. That neuroscience education was coming in handy there. You're like, all right, I can figure that this shit out. rolling glass so. pain you're doing equations. Yeah. <laughs> and also, you guys know this guy because you've seen him in other movies. I've never seen this guy before, but all I can think is that it's bizarro Steve Carell. Like, that's oh, yes. all I oh, see the right? whole time. Yeah, wow. I have him down as Very the monkey upsetting. from 28 Days Later got clean and found Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I also wrote, Allison is literally the worst actress of all time. Oh, she's yeah. so bad. Yeah. So bad. Oh, to be fair, very, she very could bad. be reading her lines at gunpoint. I mean, I know the script for this movie, <laughs> and if that was the case, she did great. That's true. And they make her... They make her like the most one dimensional, like honestly, mentally ill character. And yep. it's kind of sad because she does really seem like she has like some sort of personality disorder or maybe like some sort of like Stockholm syndrome thing where she's just so anxious and so oppressed and so nervous and really, really has horribly low self-esteem that she just giggles uncontrollably and is constantly apologizing to everybody for everything she says. And you're like, God, this poor girl, she's ill. Yeah. Right. And the thing is, is that they're like, they're clearly like, at least in Bruce Marciano's mind, when he wrote these lines for her, it was supposed to be like the, the, you know, charmingly nervous. Yeah, innocent. He does it. Yeah, right, like right. But, but the way she plays it, it is like a, it's like a personality disorder. It's like, oh, yes. wow. She, yeah, she's going to talk to me with a puppet, isn't she? Okay, that's Yeah, fine. like, like that's there's something it's... that is very, like, this girl has such low self-esteem that she's, ob like, she plays the character of a girl that could easily be, you know, if you were, like, a cult leader and you were on the hunt, yeah. like, she would be the girl that <laughs> yeah. you would be like, ha you know, have, have you, do you want to come hang out and meditate with me? Like, there would be a thing there because yeah. she's got such low self-esteem. It's yeah, I, st I stole this from my wife, but when I finished the movie, Anna turned to me and said, Bruce Marciano thinks this movie is Juno, but this movie is what Bruce Marciano got kicked out of the theater for yelling at Juno. <laughs> <laughs> right. Wait, so you made your wife watch this movie with you? She's eight months pregnant. They, if, if I'm doing something in the living room, she's just there for it at this point, you know? Yeah. Cruel and unusual. Yeah. Perfect, perfect movie for third trimester, yeah. <laughs> so, and also, again, okay, so this, in this moment, so the, the, what, what's happening on screen is, is the janitor, who we all know is Jesus, is, you know, just kind of like chatting with her, and she still thinks he's just a regular janitor, but... The way this plays is that this is a 50-year-old man flirting with an 18-year-old girl at an abortion clinic, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like, the first line he says to her when it's no longer VO is, may I? And she's like, what? And he's got his little <laughs> broomy mop thing, and he's like, may I? And she's like, oh, you want to clean under my feet, which who the fuck does that in a waiting room? Yeah, right. And especially <laughs> a doctor's office waiting room. And then she, she's like, tries to get up, and he's like, no, please just sit there and like lift your legs up so I can clean underneath them. Like, <laughs> what is the actual fuck? That happens. It's, it's the first oh. thing that happens. It's yeah. so creepy. I wanted her to be like, hey, uh, just quick question. Did you say I love you like a dozen times just now to me? <laughs> and then him to be like, no, what? That's no, that's Steve on the PA. We have the same voice. Steve, say something on the PA just so it's clear what's oh, happening. Me on the PA. He yeah. starts ventriloquist dummying the PA. 
Also, like, soon we realize that she's the only one that can see him. But until then, she's talking to him and nobody else seems to notice that she's talking to nobody. Even like the whole after movie. she yeah. knows. Yeah, exactly. Even after, like, yeah. The, the, you know, but, but then we also later see that they're also talking to invisible janitors the whole time. I wanted somebody to stand up in the middle of this abortion clinic and go, hey, are we all talking to different invisible janitors right now? <laughs> yeah, like, what is actually <laughs> happening? Really wanted to listen in on some of those invisible janitor conversations. <laughs> Just like, Stop saying problem of evil. All right, you know what? Never mind. <laughs> 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 all right so yeah and then like she breaks her phone and defends her deadbeat boyfriend who's supposed to be there but he's not right rick yeah rick right yeah so she goes outside to call rick he doesn't answer she leaves him the i'm at the abortion clinic alone message but she's such a bad actor that at certain points i think she forgot whether she was supposed to be leaving a message or faking a conversation <laughs> <laughs> yeah. at one point she's like yeah, okay, that sounds good. Oh, no, this is a message. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. Stupid. Bye. Hello. Well, no, you're not there. Come so, back. <laughs> what? I thought you said something. You're Operator? a message. <laughs> Put me through to Rick 401. Yeah, right. Yeah, oh exactly. My God. Well, and then, okay, so like she, she gets done with this, uh, leaving a me uh, message for him. She gets off the phone and fucking janitor Jesus, pedo Jesus has been standing right behind her, listening into her phone call the entire time. Yep. And then starts telling her how she should dump her boyfriend. Exact quote. A lovely young woman like yourself deserves a guy who will treat her like a lovely young woman like yourself. <laughs> <laughs> this is the beginning of a horror oh. movie. <laughs> it is. Also, we get one of my favorite lines in the movie here where he says he's been working there since ah. 1973. Oh, oh shit. Oh, uh, I didn't get that. Because that's when abortion started. Apparently, before they were legal, he never tried to talk women out of them. Yeah, I guess. So, just to be clear, Jesus, the son of the God of the universe, got a job at Planned Parenthood in 1973 and is. Just really slow playing this movie. <laughs> <laughs> baby born. And more importantly, he was watching like abortions take place in a dentist's offices before that. And he was like, good, this is fine. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah fine. right, right, exactly. <laughs> I love this line, too, where she's like, you know, boy, I wish my dad talked to me the way you talked to me, Janitor Jesus. And he's like, yeah, I wish my dad didn't torture me to death as part of his convoluted forgiveness plan. We all fucking want stuff, don't we, lady? <laughs> his actual line is to kind of look up and go like, yeah, not all dads are perfect. Mm. Like, the implication yeah. there is really fucked Mine up, tried guys. to murder me. I mean, I had to revive myself out of a fucking cave. It was ridiculous. <laughs> Spent days in hell. It was awful. Is this when he like shows her his stigmata? Oh was that no! Later? Yeah, that's a little bit later. But yeah, oh, we're but gonna he, get yeah, there. He shows it off like the like the scene from Jaws where they're like pulling out their <laughs> leg. <with shark stars. laughs> but she's going like she's like, but Pedo Jesus, my abortion isn't making me as happy as the ones in the commercials do. Am I doing it wrong? And then like. <laughs> Pedo Jesus lays it all on the line and tells her, I think you should have the baby. And of course, he hasn't revealed himself to be Christ, Lord and Savior yet. So it's just like, yeah, but, you know, you met me eight minutes ago and are just some creepy guy listening to my phone conversations. So right. fuck you. Have you not seen the encounter and the encounter, too? I'm always Jesus, <laughs> just so you know. Just to be clear. Overcomer, Otherwise, Revelation Road read a movie. Two. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Watch a Pure Fix limited series. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Which got a mid-season cancellation yes. by Pure Flix itself. It's not even We need to record those in case they get taken off the uh, the yeah. internet somehow. Yeah, I'm, I'm on it. Need those I'm on point. it, Ethan, right? All right, so then we uh, have to meet a new character like who rushes into the movie as though she were late for the opening fucking credits. Her name is Marta. <laughs> you know, like the buses in Atlanta. <laughs> now, I have a question, because, Carrot, you're actually training to be a licensed therapist, right? Yeah, like I'm a fourth year now, almost a yeah. fourth year uh, PhD student in clinical psych. When do they teach you to do the drive-by therapisting at abortion <laughs> clinics? Is that, did you get to that year yet? Or is that a, so how, is that a whole week? Yeah, everything I wrote here, like, is she a real counselor or is she a counselor for Jesus, which is not a thing. Right. Because, <laughs> like, 
the first thing she does, it, the first thing she legally would have to do is have Allison sign an informed consent, right? Like, I'm going to treat you now. These are the legal requirements of that. This is a safe space. If you tell me that you are feeling like you want to harm yourself or others, I have a duty to to protect. Like all this stuff. She doesn't do any of that. She like drives up and she's like, I'm your counselor. Like, no. (laughs) And then then she's there for five whole minutes. She drives up by the way and doesn't even park all the way in her space. No. She's like half in her parking space, walks up to, to... Allison, who's sitting on a park bench outside, and it's like, I'm your counselor. Glow sent me. Okay. And then she starts talking about herself the whole time. She's yep. like, let me tell you about my life, kid. Never asks her any questions. And then it's like, <laughs> oh, by the way, abortion counselors are in high demand. I have to leave. Good luck with your life. And you're like, wait, <laughs> what? And we never see her again. No, oh, nope. and also right Done. before she leaves, she's like, shit, I got to go. I'm going to tell you a bunch of personal information yes, about yes. another client of mine. <laughs> yep. She's like so And illegal. then I'm going to tell you how much worse she's got it than your ass. <laughs> yes. Yep. This is basically like we should show this scene in ethics class because it's like all the things you never wanted to as a therapist <laughs> and you will okay. lose your license. But obviously this woman is not a licensed therapist. I think she's supposed to be an angel, but they got confused halfway through because she started telling her that she should have an abortion. So maybe she's a (laughs) devil? Yeah, so like I thought what we were going for here at first before she starts endorsing abortion is that you know, that Miss Glow secretly is anti-abortion and calls in this Christian crisis pregnancy center counselor. Yeah. And I was I was writing in my notes like I bet this shit exactly this shit happens all the time. Of course. But- yeah. Of, of every day, of course. And it's like it's the mom from American Pie. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys <laughs> notice that? Like it's oh, the yeah. bizarro version. No, not literally oh, okay. her, but it looks exactly like her. It looks like exactly her, yeah. like her. I, I yeah, looked on her IMDb her. page trying to figure out where the fuck I recognize oh, this. Oh, yeah. Actress. No, she's, so. she's Stifler's mom. And, she looks uh, just like Stifler, yeah. All the yeah. Christopher yeah. Guest movies, yeah. She's, yeah. she's the ShopRite brand of that actress. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> also, uh, one question on maybe the, that ethics class you got doing uh, studying yeah. therapy. At the end of your conversation, if, well, if you're a drive-by therapist like this, <laughs> would you um, ask about the person's exotic eyes and what race they are and if they're part Asian. Oh, God. Is that appropriate? I almost forgot about that shit. Didn't she say something like, you got a little Asian in you? Yep. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> something crazy. Yeah. Well, no, positive. I mean positive. I like Asian eyes is what I'm Okay, bye. Never mind. Yeah, she goes, That's she what goes sorry, inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> the movie realized that after it said that. That's so weird. <laughs> we cut. Would have been hilarious, though, if her boyfriend had been no? Asian. It's almost like the guy cut. who wrote it was like, she looks a little Asian. People are going to ask. We have to address <laughs> it. some exposition in here. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> All I'm asking is that you end your first counseling session, Kara, by asking everyone if they're an octoroon. I think it'll set <laughs> a good tone. All right. <laughs> they screen tested this and people were like, what percentage? What is the main character? We need it to be said. Oh, seven eighths. Okay. So I'll allow right, seven eighths. All right. Eights. That's fine then. Oh, all right. So, yeah. So she drives away and, and this is where... Allison starts to realize that no one can see pedo Jesus but her, which there's no reason for her to realize that either. She's just like, wait a minute. No one can see you but me. It's like we're in a shitty movie. And then he goes, and I love this line so goddamn much. He goes, well, I'm not a ghost and I'm not an angel and I'm not. He looks down and goes, you know who? That leaves only one option. And I'm like, the janitor at the Planned Parenthood? <laughs> There's way more than one option, by the way. I can come I up know. with so many non-Jesus options. <laughs> and even if he is supposed to be some sort of, like, spirit or God, like, hello, Christianity's not the only religion. Like, there are a lot of right. religions with lots of gods. Like, right. what even? Oh, oh, crazy so billionaire insulting. remake. She's like, Jesus? And he's like, no, Vishnu turns into the seven-tongued <laughs> god of destruction. Oh, that would have been okay. awesome. Yep. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I just want a movie where like, he does this to like a D&D nerd chick and she comes up with 3,700 things he might be to ask him <laughs> yes. about. Okay, wait. Wait, I'm, ju- I'm just now to the G's. All right, so <laughs> now she's going to... Oh, God, so, so she goes back into the clinic now, right? Because she doesn't want to talk to him anymore. So she's going to... 
chat with Lucretia, the abortion veteran, and then Ooh. Janitor Jesus is just going to stand there staring at her like a stalker the whole time. Allison also asks if it's okay for her to say the word janitor. Oh, like it's on <laughs> it's, like, it's like the, the it's like it reminds me of when Steve Carell in The Office was doing the like racial sensitivity training, and he's like, "Is there a better word than Mexican?" And they're like, "Mexican's not offensive." <laughs> like, like he's, she's like, "I hate to say it, but like janitor." Yes, and I was like, well, yes. that's the thing you're concerned. <laughs> you have a J word in the room, and he's bothering me. <laughs> and meanwhile, Lucretia's over there being like, "I got nineteen. Oh, shit. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey Lucretia, question. Should we say Janet? What do we say? <laughs> what if it's in a song, Lucretia? Can I sing the word Janet? <laughs> Lucretia, what percentage black are you? Just we're asking everybody. Tanahasi coat check. And she. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, but the receptionist tells her, no, there's no janitor. So she walks back over to him. And then we have that fucking weird moment where, like, she's like, you don't look like Jesus, do you? And he does the wacky morphs, right? Where he's like, oh, oh I could show up as the Burger King mascot's dad. I could be this I kind of Jesus like or that, that kind that of Jesus. Scene. What? You think I look like God? I'll prove it. See, Dumbledore? Nope, he's gay. Uh, <laughs> Renaissance painting. There you go. I'm God. Fuck you. I kind of liked that scene. It was fun. I was not <laughs> excited. Like, 245 movies in, I never expected to see that. So, yeah. It worked. It was like campy and it kind of worked. But the weird thing, too, is that she looks over at him at one point. I don't remember why or under what circumstances, but he's, it's like that thing where the actor's not good enough to like cry in scene. So they had to cut away from him. And then when they cut back to him, he's got like tears in his eyes. Do you guys yes. remember this? And I was yeah. like, what's happening? Like, Absolutely, scary. I remember that. <laughs> They had to cut away from him punching himself in the face a few times <laughs> yes. and then being like, oh, okay, come back to me, come back but to like, me. But like, why was he crying? Do you guys know? Well, because that came right after they called Wendy, Wendy Smith of 1372 Maple Drive back to have her <laughs> abortion, right? Yeah, it's like all this personal identifying <laughs> yes. information. And he was crying for her baby is what it was. Okay, but to be clear, her name was Wendy Mae Fong. And yes. The receptionist is like, Wendy May Fong? Am I saying that right? <laughs> and Wendy's like, Yeah, that's it, that's a sound in English. I'm I'm American. I just happen to be Asian. Well, you're being weird. What the fuck are you talking about? How would you say any word that ends in O N G here, idiot? <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what, this movie has me wanting to wash my hands more than the goddamn pandemic. So we're gonna pause for a quick break, but we'll be back in a minute with even more Allison's Choice. But I don't get it. If you're really God and you don't want us to have an abortion, why not just stop us from getting pregnant? Oh, Allison, you live in a fallen world. No, that, that's not an answer. Hey, how about that weather we're having, huh? Clouds, am I right? It just, it just seems that the perfect creator of the universe would be concerned about all the floods and tornadoes and uh, pandemics. Nope, you did that. You did it. You no. I mean, even if it was just about abortion, 30% of pregnancies self-terminate. Do you put souls in them? Was this your card? I didn't pick a card. Yes, you did. <sighs> okay. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. We're going to open up on Allison stepping outside to get some fresh air and facilitate a scene change. We just go back and forth between the two, the waiting room and outside of the waiting room and the waiting room. And this is where we're going to meet Rita. And then yeah. as bad as all of the, like, cause we have, we've seen like throughout the movie, they keep calling women by their full names back into the room. This is the first time we see them do that to a woman who's outside, you know, yes. at the Baskin Robbins next door. <laughs> They're like, Rita, it's time to kill your baby. Like, Rita, <laughs> abortion time. Yeah. They might as well patch into the Baskin Robbins PA and be like, hello, Rita. <laughs> abortion across the street, Rita. I oh, think this shit. is the first time that I wrote in my notes, I hate you guys for making this. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, you made it this far. <laughs> yeah, right, right, exactly. I, I noticed you said first time, so yeah, I'll be, I'll be ready for some more. That's a win. So yeah, so Rita goes back in, and of course, Janitor Jesus has been standing there the whole time. She goes, 
why can't these people see you? And he's like, you know, you literally asked me that question like three scenes ago. That's how bad we are at writing these. <laughs> and and I've changed my answer to they can. We're all having conversations simultaneously. But he's the janitor for all of them. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, he's not. <laughs> and he's mopping the sidewalk. And she's like, yeah, this is normal. This is normal. But I, oh I'll tell you God. what. If there is not a crisis pregnancy center that is running this exact scam, right? This whole like, no, you guys pretend you're here for abortions too and can't see the janitor. It's only because they didn't think of it, okay? Yeah, this movie has inspired many. This is also where he does a bunch of the lying about the fetus. He's like, right now, your daughter has a tiny little heart and can confirm, nope, very much not. <laughs> well, there's a thing that beats though. Georgia was, w w w w would be happy to... To prove that to you, yeah. <laughs> God. Yeah. yeah, he says, seriously, your daughter's alive. She lives. And I wanted him to prove it like he did with the God costumes. He just like turns into a zygote the size of a peanut and falls on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> See? He's like, she's already got a heartbeat. If you were in Georgia, I could citizens arrest your ass for this. Yeah, right. You guys, right. the line, I'm literally hand forming her inside you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> God. So mm. I quit the and, movie four times right there. And he calls her mommy. He's like, yes. inside of you, mommy. Ma and I'm like, this man, it should be illegal for this man to say the word mommy. Yeah, it's no, for so sure. so disgusting. Absolutely. Like, mm -hmm. I, I I was like retching by the end of this. Like, bleh. Just oh just yeah, no! Eh, like every time, every time he, he's constantly for the rest of the movie going to be talking about how her baby just wants to feel the warmth of her mommy's arm and wants her mommy not to kill her. Oh, you know, the entire so rest creepy. of the fucking movie. Mommy, and I just want to say the first time <laughs> this this movie was supposed to be episode seventy four of this podcast, and then I was like, oh no 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 no, I'm going to save this for an amazing prank war. But like now that I'm about to become a parent. <laughs> It is so much more repellent that they're using <laughs> like actually exciting stuff like ultrasounds and the movement of your child. Yes, right. The heartbeat the, and everything. Yes. It's like hiding an ad for Coca-Cola in someone's grandma's casket. This whole movie is just like, <laughs> huh? How about a Pepsi? <laughs> So and also there's this weird moment where Jesus tells her like she's like he's like, hey, look, I entrusted you with this child because even though you don't think you can handle it, I know that you can. And I'm like, which is why there's never been infanticide committed by a mother in the wait. Oh, I'm not very good at this. <laughs> Shit. Susan Smith was Muslim. That's not <laughs> the other guy. But you haven't seen anything yet because this is the point where Jesus goes. Would you like to meet your daughter? And I'm like, oh, please pull out a sock puppet. Please pull out a sock <laughs> puppet. Let it be that Eli is just prophetic. But no, <laughs> no, they doodly do into her womb. Yeah. But actually, the fetus is pretty good. <laughs> oh, they nailed the fetus. It's not the yep. right age. No, it's a much older <laughs> fetus. <laughs> That's like my kid now. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> It doodly doos to her womb. It's empty, and then it has to doodly do again. <laughs> doodly do it farther. It's just Osmosis Jones standing next to a group of cells. You mean this thing? Shut, shut up, Osmosis. <laughs> she just doodly doos to a restaurant. She's like, "What am I looking at? I don't see it." Oh no, no, right there on the table. That little thing. That. Oh, that's it. Okay. That's it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. So they got. They have this like seven month old CGI fetus. And look, I'm. Those things look really fucking gross, right? Like, I mean, you know, they I do. know. They do. They're not cute. No, they're just kind of like, I mean, Eli, I'm sure I will like your kid eventually. But like right now, <laughs> it's just a gross thing that will eventually be a cute baby. It's like an alien pug. Yeah. <laughs> like if, if it were just an ultrasound image or even a 3D ultrasound image, it would be like cuter. But instead, they're showing like a 3D CGI fetus. So it's like pink and squishy. And it's got like the dark eye, you know, like yeah. it's not like the real yeah. eye, it's got <laughs> eye spots. And then like the dark kind of blood vessel mm -hmm. that you can see under its like creepy yeah. translucent skin. Yeah, the fucking varicose <laughs> veins all over its face and shit. Like it got turned by another fetus zombie in there. <laughs> yeah. At one point it upsetting. looks right at us with its little creepy eye buds and that'll haunt my nightmares forever. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just glad they didn't do like a like a voiceover of it being like, 
mama. <laughs> <laughs> you know it did in a couple cuts of this. Oh, before for they were sure. like, you know what? Too much. <laughs> oh, and then, okay, so but we get out of that because uh, we leave the, the CGI fetus when her deadbeat boyfriend calls, right? He has purchased a new snowboard instead of paying for her abortion <laughs> um, and worst. wants to brag about it. He calls her and he's just like, you would not believe this sweet ass snowboard I bought instead of getting you something. <laughs> also, <laughs> fuck you for making me feel guilty about it. He's so cartoonish. <laughs> he's She's so like, horrible. oh, you said you didn't have the money for my abortion. So I sold one of my kidneys. And he's like, wow. <laughs> I cannot believe you would come between me and my snowboard right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then he wins her back with some homophobic teasing. He's like, huh? You want to be a dude? You're a dude. Yeah, what was that? Well, no, so his was homo his his was transphobic. And then she came back with the homophobic teasing, right? Because this was what Bruce Marciano came up with when he thought flirty talk. <laughs> right was was two was two fucking characters going you're a gay no you're a gay <laughs> oh right because she's allison and she goes by al yeah right. and then he's he starts calling her aloysius right. he's like if you think about it if i'm aloysius then aren't you gay and he's like end of call end of call this is funny anyway. <laughs> Girl, it takes one to no one <laughs> i'm gonna go buy another snowboard you want to get some Papa John's after this? Yes. And then he's like, let's get pizza. And she's like, how about you come help me with my abortion? And he's like, you sound like you're on your period. I'm going to go. <laughs> like, it's so mm, much I'm already at Papa John's. I got so, a table. I did I'm the like, thing at Little Caesars where you're supposed to pick it up from the machine. I don't want anybody to get mine. I'll see you after. Five for five dollars. I, I, I wrote down. So basically, God is pressuring her to have a child with an abusive, narcissistic boyfriend. How is that better? Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't understand. Oh. All right. So now we're back. In, we go back into the waiting room. Rick is sending her puppy pics on the phone. So she's in a great mood. She just can't wait to abort that fetus now. Right. Uh, <laughs> but Lucretia is going to pop her bubble. She's like, yes. yeah, you know, he sends me funny pictures. Those are his love language. And Lucretia's like, yeah, that's just something people who aren't actually in love say is not real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then he's. she's like, no, 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 let me explain to you how my dad never said yes! this love <laughs> And this was his love language. And then Lucretia goes, well, my dad just wasn't around. And she's like, stop it, this is serious. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> she's like, my problems matter. You're talking about poor black people problems. I don't have time for Excuse that right me, now. Excuse me, I'm the main character here, okay? <laughs> it's so gross. Oh, Jesus, you are a supporting character, okay? You Did you just say hashtag? Tag black people problems to me? Get the fuck yeah. out of here. And Lucretia's the only voice of reason in this whole movie, by the way. I yep. want Lucretia's fucking movie, honestly. Yes. I know. Uh, she's actually pretty amazing. She's delightful. Yeah. Sequel. Sequel. So, Lucretia's sequel. choices. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we could do a trilogy. Yeah. All right. And then Janitor Jesus shows back up. And she doesn't want to talk her, about her boyfriend with this middle-aged man. Reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, and he's like, uh, you know, it won't be a problem. And she's like, well, what do you know about trouble? It's not like you've ever been crucified. Yeah. You know what? Fuck it. Fuck it. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. You win. You win this one, though. Okay. This. Yeah. Wait, is this when he shows his stigmata? Or does that still hasn't happened yet? <laughs> not quite. It's, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah oh, it feels it. like he was just doing <laughs> it throughout, to be fair. Yeah. Just, that was the, the feel of the whole movie. Yeah. But I think this is when she first brings up the problem of evil. Yeah. Officially, she's <laughs> like, hey, middle-aged janitor, can you fucking leave? And you're God? You're saying you're Jesus or whatever? You want to go fix some evil? Maybe go get the born babies out of cages? I don't know. And he's like, <laughs> so no. <laughs> yeah, and what's, scene. what's amazing about this movie is that they don't even bother jingling the keys to distract you. She's just like, what about all the evil in the world? And he's like, I'm talking about you right now. Don't change the subject. Yeah, right, yes. <laughs> He does, you know what he does is he's like, he does the Trump thing where, where she's like, but, but God, you're allowing like AIDS and famine and torture. And he's like, no, that you guys did that. You, that was you. That's you. That was you. You and guys like, created cancer. 
you. Yeah, and she's like, oh, okay. <laughs> she just, it was like, mostly Trump. Wendy Mae Fong with that corona <laughs> thing. Guys. It's like he's just standing up there going, but the Democrats, and they're like, all right. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Nailed it. <laughs> the Obama. <Jesus. laughs> Obama didn't have a vaccine for this new fucking disease. That's his fault. There more people die of the flu every year than die of me killing them. <laughs> So and then, like strangely, so she's arguing with Jesus about whether her boyfriend's any good. And then we doodly do into a memory from the montage at the beginning of the movie where he's telling her to just go abort that shit. God, and he's so horrible. At one point, she's like, "So how do we pay for this thing if that's what we're gonna do?" And he's like, "Ah, I got the snowboard. Ah, uh, <laughs> we'll split it like." Uh, King Solomon? Is that for <laughs> <laughs> Too soon? Are we not joking yet? I feel like we're... Right. Can we not be joking about this yet? Do you remember the part where she's asking him? He's like at the basketball court and she's like, uh, I don't think I want to have an abortion. That seems scary. And he's like, no, my bro had an abortion just the other day. Yo, bro. <laughs> like, come on down here and tell her all about your abortion. She's like, Shh, stop. We're up with it. It's the worst. <laughs> also, they didn't have an outfit for her for this scene, so they just took off her pants and put a hat on her. So she looks like she's in an outfit for a winter themed porn. It's insane. <laughs> yeah, she's wearing weird knee socks the whole time. I think they think that made her look younger and also like weirdly sexualized her a little bit. Yeah. Mm. Cause like, she's very Ugh. like Christian on top, party on the bottom. Like, she's, always wearing, <laughs> <laughs> she's wearing like short skirts and shorts with knee socks. Yeah. But then on top, she's like in shawls. <laughs> It's like, what is happening? Christian heathen mullet of people. <laughs> yes. And then at the end of the scene, it pans back over to God, who is awful sad about her boyfriend abusing her, but not, you know, stop it sad. Just, you know, bummed about it. Right, oh, right. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite, though, is when she calls over, or he calls over the guy and to, like, talk about the abortion that he just helped with. And then she's like, I don't want to talk about this with him. And he's like, never mind, dude, never mind. And so the guy runs up, and he just looks at the two of them, and he goes, chicks, man. <laughs> <laughs> can't live with them, can't just kick them in the stomach. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. It's like the best line of the whole... This guy has no context, you know, has no idea what's going on. He just ran sweaty from the basketball court. And he's like, never mind, never mind. He goes, chicks, man. <laughs> that was his one line, you know. Yep. We practiced that in the mirror yeah. so many times. <laughs> so good. Chicks, man. No, too much, too much. <laughs> chicks are making me Chicksman? It's not <laughs> Chicksman like a last name. That's stupid. Okay. All right. So then, so we cut out of the memory and like, you know, which, which uh, Jesus has presented to her. She's like, no, no, he's a good guy. And he's like, oh, really? What about this doodly do? And then she, we come out of the doodly do. And she's like, all right. Yeah, that was a pretty bad doodly do. And so she's mad now. She goes up to, to Miss Glow and she says, Hey, is there a room somewhere where I can escape my psychotic delusion for a few oh, minutes? Oh, yeah, we have a dark brooding room here at this <laughs> clinic. No, no, it's perfect. It's, it's mostly dark. There's a, we actually have a rain machine just outside the one window for just that spot. It's a dark brooding room. Yeah, we got you. Good, 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 yeah. And by the way, like when she says, do you have somewhere I could go? I'm feeling a little sick. She's like, yeah, sit on the floor in a room with a chair in it. <laughs> <laughs> What? Might as well be a circle on the floor. Like, don't <laughs> use chair. Move <laughs> darkly. And then she goes into this room, slumps down on the floor, crying, like you do. Mm -hmm. And then God is like, I'm just going to get a little bit closer. What if I just, I'm just going to kneel. <laughs> can, I, can I just put my hand right here on your thigh? Oh, <laughs> and you're just like, I can't. Like, oh. this is so not okay. I'm going to be big spoon. I'll be small spoon. I'll be small spoon, God. Got it. <laughs> Janitor God starts using the yawn trick, trying to put his arm around yeah, her. Right. <laughs> right. We're both taking a nap. <laughs> well, also, there was this weird threat thing here, too. Like, right? He says, you know, if you go through with this abortion, you will pay a terrible, terrible price for, for it. And I'm like, what, what are you? You're going to kill her? What are you saying, <laughs> man? Like to be clear, her. God is going to send her to hell for not listening to him? <laughs> oh God, that is what he was threatening, wasn't? It? Yep. Wow, that's that, that's what yeah. that was. Fuck, I'm gonna yeah. burn you for eternity. Was the okay? Yeah, I just yeah. sometimes their shit is so evil that I'm like, well, you couldn't be saying something that evil nonchalantly. <laughs> oh, you could. You you guys yeah. do that all the time. Okay. Yeah. And throughout this whole thing, just one other detail: 
he's still carrying his fucking mop and it's getting in the way. <laughs> and getting- like, she's like, can you just put down the fucking mop? Like trying to like <laughs> comfort her and the mop is like poking. And it's rattling around and like <laughs> slips on it. <laughs> And then, oh, God. And then we go to the if she had the baby montage, right? Because motherhood is mostly picking up flowers and having tea parties, right? Oh, my God. I, I so wanted this to just be a montage of, like, a baby smearing shit into a crib in its face and <laughs> getting chicken pox and then turning into a teenager and screaming, I hate you and I wish you were dead. <laughs> you know? but no. We're watching the montage from the ghost of fetus future right now. <laughs> It's so weird. I wanted another ghost to show up and be like, oh, well, here's a montage about the daughter you won't have in five years. And <laughs> think the ghosts get in a fight and be like, hey, you can't doodly do it out of my doodly do into your own doodly do. Absolutely not. <laughs> doodly do, doodly do, doodly do. Okay, we're getting nowhere. We're getting nowhere. You're getting this montage every time you have your period from now on. I hope you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> and again, just. Using the joy of parenthood as a guilt trip to take away women's rights. It's the kind of thing that should be punished with medieval torture. Oh, absolutely. It's disgusting. By the way, my wife was watching again because she's stuck in on the couch where I watch these movies. And she was more offended by the banjo playing in this montage than she was the movie. (laughs) I was offended by her weird like Gaia Earth Mother vibe that this Mm, whole scene is. She's like... They're like playing on a little playground set and she's got like her child has a flower crown and a beautiful and she's got like weird teeth too. The kids teeth were freaking me out. And then like Allison, you know, she's older because she's got like a side bun and she's wearing a shawl. Right. (laughs) And that's like how you know that she's like aged. Not because her child is like seven. (laughs) Like that's kind of weird. In seven years, she's going to be the owner of a therapeutic crystal store. We learned. Yeah, exactly. What if there's like incense burning? And also like, where is the asshole dad? I still don't f- understand the argument. Is is the argument for the asshole dad in this movie? Like, just deal with it. It's part of the problem of being a woman. Like, you just have to have narcissistic, abusive husbands. Or is it like, don't worry, he's going to leave, and then you'll be left to raise this daughter all by yourself? Like, I, I, think I don't it's understand. The mm, yeah, yeah, definitely. I think it's the yes. I can't Either. tell Doesn't which matter. is worse, yeah. but yeah, well, I guess, I, know. I guess, no, yeah, I can tell which is worse, but it's still bad either fucking way. Yeah. <laughs> it's bad either way because they never really broach any of the like the real issue. Like you right. said, there's no, you know, sh- smearing shit and there's no her being like, how am I going to make ends meet? Right. I don't have any skills or a job and I don't even know what I do for a living because they didn't give my character enough backstory. <laughs> like, it's so terrible. Really wanted it to flash schooling. to the child being taken away by child services. They yes, flash back exactly. out and God is like, like whoa, oh sorry, I thought you'd be a better <laughs> mom than that. Oof. Somebody like triple doodly dude me. I don't know what the fuck happened uh, And like, I think the reason that this movie really got to me in such a heavy way is that not only am I training right now to become a psychotherapist, right? I also, my very first practicum where I spent over um, a year and a half and just recently closed out my practicum site. So this is practicum is where you see clients before you do your full year internship. So you do, in my program, you do 1500 plus hours of therapy before you are a doctoral candidate. And then you do a full a full year pre-doc internship and then you do a post-doc internship before you can get licensed. So it's like a lot of therapy that you do before you're ever licensed psychologist. And so my first practicum site was at a group home for adolescent girls. So these are you know, kids, most of which were taken from their parents um, by Child Protective Services for various reasons, but oftentimes because mom and dad were struggling or there was no dad or there was no mom and there was a lot of struggling. And then many of our girls actually do get pregnant and they end up having to go to a maternity group home. And so like I'm dealing with, you know, the repercut, like the real shit that you see with teen pregnancy mm. or with the outcomes of teen pregnancy and with like low SES, right. like no support, like people who are trying to thrive under horrible circumstances. And it's just like, this just makes a mockery of like what actually fucking happens in the world. And also rape, a, a yeah. lot of rape victimization and CSEC victimization. Mm. Um, so it's pretty, uh, sorry, and CSEC is a, a commercial sexual exploitation of children, which is like a very common problem in our country. And so it's like disgusting to watch them just like make light of all of this shit. Or just ignore it. Just pretend it doesn't just even exist. It. Yeah. 
Right. Well, and it, like the whole premise of this movie is that she's raped at the beginning, right? Like, or at least that she's like, well, that is rape. That's the thing. We've made these mm-hmm. like social kind of distinctions, especially within this Christian faith. It's like, oh, she wasn't raped. She was just like convinced against her will to like, you know. Well, and especially given what we know about this character, like you said, whether this was intentionally or not, this character is played like a person who is mentally ill and has like dangerously low self-esteem. So yeah, yes. it very much plays like rape in this movie. Yeah, she is a vulnerable individual who because uh, whether it was because of her childhood issues with her father, which they actually do allude to, or whether there's some, you know, neurobiological stuff going on, there is a constellation of symptoms that make this woman see people that aren't there, Mm -hmm. be incredibly uh, volatile emotionally, and that are, you know, contributing to her lack of self-efficacy so that she's always trying to please everybody. She's much more concerned about what other people think than about her own feelings of self-worth and the only thing that matters to her. And even Jesus points this out multiple times in the movie. Like, why are you so concerned with this asshole boyfriend and what he thinks about you? You should be thinking about yourself, which is weird because that argument should actually, in many circumstances, lead to her making... Yeah, Yeah, no, you should be thinking about... The right. unborn fetus. Yes, the unborn <laughs> fetus. You're right. That's the only yourself as party. it relates to the unborn fetus. As, right. Yeah, as yeah. it relates to being a baby fetus. Right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You should be thinking about your womb. Yeah. Don't don't let Bruce Marciano's like casual racism and stupidity distract us from the fact this is such an insidious movie. At its oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. 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 All right, so, clear. <laughs> yeah, so she w- now let's get back to the funnies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so she wakes up from her dream about the baby that she was thinking about murdering, and now she doesn't want to. She doesn't want to have the abortion anymore, right? She's changed her mind, but just in that very moment, abortion Nazi shows up in the little supply closet that they stashed her in. And she's like, oh, damn it, I'm not going to lose another abortion. She's going to hard sell this woman like they work on commission. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, here's a here's a fetus. Just hold it in your hand for a second. See how it feels. <laughs> the fuck. But this, I love this character. They don't realize it, but this character is such a great argument for pro-choice. Oh, and she's... what's amazing is they try to make her seem sad by nice things, but they don't know what things are bad. They're like, oh yeah, last year I went on vacation by myself. Yeah. Terrible. With no. my money. <laughs> Yeah. I bought it with my money and I went on a vacation on the beach. Mwa ha 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 ha. I'm a woman. I, I have chosen not to. Well, okay. So the, the, the goal here, that right, this character is D, right? Certainly for devil. Of course. Oh. So subtle. Yeah. 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 Her, I'm sure her last <laughs> name is Vil. <laughs> so, but D is supposed to be the feminazi, right? The 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 evil feminist who just wants oh, me, sure. me, me, who only cares about herself. And I love this detail so goddamn much. Is only a month away from celebrating her five thousandth abortion. What the fuck was this? <laughs> okay, she brags about it. She's like, check out the tally I have on my fetus gun. It's fucking great. I'm four thousand nine hundred ninety nine. To be Look fair, they probably shouldn't have set up the confetti in the doctor's office to drop at the five thousandth abortion. That's on the clinic. But it's, other than that, I was. I think it was more offensive where the confetti came from than that there was confetti. But yes, Eli, I agree. I agree. Uh, oh my God, she was great. And then also, and also, fuck you, movie. They have a whole big thing about how she has cats instead of children because she's <laughs> Yeah, like evil. she wears them as like ID tags around her neck. Like it's, you know, like the doctor's badges that or nurse badge. Wait, is she a nurse or a doctor? I believe she's a nurse. I can't, I couldn't tell. She's a nurse. Okay, yeah, they never say, mm-hmm. but like she's wearing scrubs, but she's not the doctor because they refer to the doctor later. And so she's wearing this like badge around her neck that's like her nurse badge, but then it's also just like cat trading cards. <laughs> yes. There's <laughs> <laughs> it's like something weird there. And I don't, what's the implication here? Like, don't get me wrong, I'm a dog person. And I get that there's like this crazy cat lady trope, but is the implication that like she's lonely and she's going to die and the cats will eat her face? Yes. Like, I yes. Don't yes. Understand. Absolutely oh, okay. what they're saying. Right. So yeah. the, right. the implication Okay, she doesn't here, have a man or children. Right. right. Is that she has, a, mm-hmm. she has cats instead of a family and therefore is an evil person. Is broken yes. and incomplete. Right. Yeah, exactly. But really, like they actually write her arguments not poorly. Like she's like, 
listen, child, let me tell you about what it's like to have freedom, to be literate, (laughs) you know, to have good health care. Like, I'm going to talk to you about being a self-sufficient woman. Like, these are the things that happen in your life. You have a lot of, like, self-efficacy. You make decent money and you don't have to rely on somebody else so that when he cheats on you and leaves you, you're not going to be, like, beholden to him. Oh, but that's all evil? Like, yeah. it's very confusing yeah. to me. Right. Like, I'm watching and I'm like, right on, devil. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. No. She's like, yeah, got I just it. got back from hedonism. I was on the beach. I fucked a lot. It was great. It was great. <laughs> and she was the only one who was concerned about the fact that they just left her in a yes, lump on the floor. Yes, exactly. And it's like random. <laughs> She's like, are you okay? Can we get you like into a chair? <laughs> Guys, how many times do I have to tell you we're not, that's not a brooding room. We're not doing that. <laughs> yeah. That has to go. Well, and here's the <laughs> fucked up thing. D is like, would you like to sit in our break room that we have that you could have been in? Right? Like, it's not like they didn't have a good room for her to yeah. be in. We here. have a lit room. <laughs> we, we really- this is also weird because basically it's as if instead of taking her to her actual appointment, they're like, oh, it's time for your appointment. You're going to do it in the kitchen. <laughs> like, it's like really weird. Like, like they walk her in and the door says break room. And then there's like a refrigerator and an inspirational poster. And then they sit her down. Oh, and by the way, on the way to, to the break room, they pass by. Uh, like an abortion gone bad yes. down the hall and the door's <laughs> wide open. Yes. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> yep. yeah, that's Rita. We'll come back to that. But yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so she goes to the she goes to the break room and uh, she's looking at the, the pictures on the wall. There's pictures of the, the main doctor, the main baby murderer. Apparently he goes to Zimbabwe to just, you know, murder some babies for fun over there once a year, right? Also, oh, yeah, right. he has this cork board it's it's pictures of him, but also it appears to be non-parents who sent pictures of themselves like holding their nothing and smiling. Being like, hey, thanks, oh, Doc. more abortion <laughs> clinics need those. Just like people sending in pictures of their college degrees Just and their nice bags cars. of money. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah, exactly. They're cats. And this is like, he's supposed to be a good guy, this doctor. And he's like pure evil. Like he's like a colonialist asshole. They're like, you know, oh, look, he goes to Zimbabwe every, like he gets his like fucking white pride from going there oh, right. and like feeling good about himself for five minutes. And then he's like, <laughs> not nice to her. Oh no, like he's supposed to be no. evil. And it's amazing to me, and you might not even notice this as a Californian, how many things they squeeze in there right away that are meant to just irk the Christian viewer, right? He walks Uh. into this room and he's like, me and my wife juice a lot. Are you a vegan? I'm going to eat carrots now. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, right. Oh, like that makes him a bad guy. Yes. Yeah. All of those things are just like, that's just like fingernails on a chalkboard to the people who watch these fucking movies. So you're so right. I didn't notice that at all. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, for you, it's just a guy walking into the room. (laughs) Just having some juice, evilly, you didn't realize. <laughs> but to be fair, the way he cuts the carrot oh that he's about to put into his juicer is bananas. Like, he's got a wood saw and he's going like, <laughs> back and forth. What the fuck? Get a knife. All right. I love this line, too, though. He's arguing with or she's arguing back with him or or something like that. And he turns to her. He goes, "Ah, I like a little spunk in a girl. And I'm like, that job security. Right. Of course. Obviously. (laughs) It's so disgusting. (laughs) And do you think do you think this is like a thing where I remember being on a job once and the show was a Tuesday airing show and they kept doing my sig off as see you next Tuesday. And I was like, guys, I can't say see you next Tuesday. Like, do you not know what that means? And, like, and they like didn't get it for the first like, three script drives. So, and, like, do you think that this, do you think this was like an accident? Because they're Christy, right? They don't know what I like spunking yeah, oh, in I'm, a girl means. I'm sure it is. It was the most amazing little accidental moment. It's a bias funke throughout. Yes. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> and I'll rape us. Um, <laughs> I wasn't worried about the pronunciation. 
it does. But so also, like, what they don't get is that the people who perform abortions or terminations are OBGYNs. Like, these are yeah. obstetrics and gynecologists. Like, these are the same people who aid in giving birth, right? They, like— Women will go to a clinic whether they're trying to do well baby checks or whether they want to terminate. And so it's the same doctors that give you a pap smear that will, you know, do a termination that will also do your ultrasounds and make sure your fetus is growing appropriately. Yeah. They don't, there's not just like baby kill doctors. <laughs> right. Like it's not, it's not, like that's not a profession. Oh, uh, she's a keep, she's a keep it. Will you bring in the real doctor who does doctor <laughs> positive, not kill. All I know is fetus gun. I'm, I'm getting a notch in a second. That's all and I'm And that's here how for. they make him out to be. He's like, I kill babies and I do it because of science. And science is about what you can prove and oh, what you can't. Oh God, and that I'm like, conversation was yeah. so frustrating where she's going like that's not what science can can the science (laughs) guarantee that my baby's not alive and he's like "Mm, you know with science we just kind of we got to air way through on the science well and they switch between baby and alive as frequently as they possibly can (laughs) he's like it's not a baby and she's like it's not alive and he's like it's not a baby and she's like who's on first and then they (laughs) run away (laughs) Isn't it alive? That's why you got to act now. You can't afford not to. <laughs> oh, he's totally upselling her the whole time. He's yeah. like, you know, What's we have to take do it. me to put you abortion? in this abortion today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this one comes with weather stripping and everything. <laughs> <laughs> undercoating? Did you say undercoating? Buy one, get For your me? next 50% off. Yeah. And he's also like <laughs> shaming her the whole time. He's like, you're going to be a horrible mother. Oh, he totally yes. is. He's going to bounce a baby off her face. You want to be the mother, huh? You want to be the mother of the house? Huh? Huh? What the fuck are you going to do with a baby? Go snowboarding? <laughs> Idiot. You have no money. Oh, oh, it was so fucking bad. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. This movie is about to get even goddamn worse. I need a minute to prepare. So we're going to pause for a quick break here. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will one of these abortions go terribly wrong? Blam! Will this movie applaud when a man shows up to drag his girlfriend out of the abortion clinic? Did you think I was fucking kidding when I said it was about to get worse? (laughs) Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the third trimester of Allison's Choice. Oh, hey, sorry, didn't realize someone was in here. Uh, I'm Dr. Satan. Hi, Allison. Uh, Hey, you don't mind if I... Have my lunch in here, do you? Killing babies all day, you know. It's a whole thing. Sorry, I mean performing abortions all day. It's uh, it's hungry work. So you mind if I eat? It, is that fun? Like- oh, non-existent. God, yes, it's fun. It's like being the bad guy in a horror movie back there, you know, like re re re, just like the whole no, time. No, 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 no. Listen, I meant is is that? Oh, me? you meant do I feel any remorse? No, not at all. No, just love to kill babies. Sorry, fetuses love to kill. Fetuses, man, if Bale could hear me now, ha, mm, a good sandwich. Anyways, thanks for uh, getting an abortion. Just really, really awesome stuff. Good choice. Is that a baby in your sandwich? No, no, it's a fetus. (sighs) Got it. Yeah, get it straight. Terminology. Fetus sandwich. (laughs) (laughs) And we're back for still more of this shit. When we last left Allison, she was getting fucking Tony D's house of abortion pitch from the doctor. (laughs) And now she's going to take this long, slow walk back down the waiting room where Rita is being wheeled out because something's gone horribly wrong. Remember Rita? (sighs) Oh, yeah. And earlier they did say, what if something goes terribly wrong? So they called it. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of the anti-abortion movies that we've reviewed do this. Quick reminder, getting an abortion is safer than going to the dentist. So Also way safer than having a goddamn baby. <laughs> yep. Right? Like, yeah. let's let's compare it to that. But also, speaking of the dentist, there's also this moment where she's walking out and she sees all the, like, the sinister medical implements. And I wrote in my notes, yeah, this is why I find dentistry to be so morally objectionable. <laughs> right? Like the sinister in- instruments, that's what makes something evil. Right. And she she's walking along this hallway. And yeah, again, there's doors open to every room and she's <laughs> yeah. looking in 
And pe- so many HIPAA violations. Hey, look, it's her vagina. Yeah, right. What? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> feels like yeah. that shouldn't be allowed. The speculum's just like open to the door. <laughs> 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 what? So, so upsetting. So illegal. But also, I, I imagine this is not what they do. But in this movie, they have blood spattered trays outside of each door like it's fucking room service. Yeah, You're like it's room it. service. <laughs> yeah, they have that long moment where she's trying to decide whether to look into the bedpan full of abortion. <laughs> oh. All of us are going like, oh God, are they? Is uh, is the movie gonna, is, is she? Okay, she's not. Okay, good. Oh, good. Okay. And the fun, <laughs> like, let's be clear. Every character in this movie has like washboard, like a six pack. Like these are not, they are <laughs> like three weeks pregnant. Yes. Like there's right, nothing. Right. And how is there a whole baby? Like, there's not a baby. No. Oh, Absolutely there's not. There's a peanut. They didn't make any of them, like, you know, second trimester abortions. They made them all, like, very early abortions. There's just no science Right, right. Like, movie. if she pulls back the thing on the bedpan, she'd be like, oh, it looks like a lima bean. I guess, really, honestly, there's I, I'm getting all worked up about nothing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but also, that's not how you do it. You don't use, like, an ice cream scoop. <laughs> it's like a little... It's like vacuum machine and it goes up into the machine. They don't like right, scoop no, it out they, and like plop it, it down. In their minds, it's you go in with a couple of little tweezers and you <laughs> pull out and put it in the little bed pan. And then you're like ring no, ring ring and spark the tweezers. <laughs> yeah. They're like hacking it out with like butter knives. Like, yeah. like get me in there. Like, Blunt, rusty object. You know, before you carve the face into pumpkin, it's like that. It's like that whole procedure there. Yeah. Okay. So Allison's sitting outside with her fake cigarette. She's she's there, like um, as the EMTs pull up to come get Rita, and she turns to Janitor Jesus and she's like, "So, are you gonna you gonna kill her or what?" <laughs> and he's like, "No." Physically, she'll be okay, but spiritually, she'll be broken forever and lose her family. Lose her family. Yep. <laughs> yep. Cut to Jesus sawing at her fucking husband's brake lines or something. <laughs> what? Yeah. And so Allison points out like, hey, that's super fucking cruel of you. To which Jesus <laughs> replies, you make me cut myself. You make me cut myself. Well, yeah, he's like, oh, you want to see cruel Allison? And I'm like, are you going to show her the sub-Saharan AIDS pandemic, man? <laughs> yeah. But no, no, Star. he's going to pull up his goddamn sleeve and show. I bet it's like fucking Jesus's four touchdowns in a single game, right? You're hanging out with Jesus. <laughs> you're like, all right, we got three goddamn more minutes before this asshole talks about the time he was crucified. <laughs> yeah, there's only one hot wing left and Jesus just casually rolls up his sleeve. Fine, take it. Take the hot wing. <laughs> <laughs> I hate well, I did this for you. you. It's fine. No, it's fine. It's fine. God is seriously, he's like John Cusack and say anything. He's like yelling outside your window with a boom box. I got crucified for you. And she's like, never asked you to do that, man. Just uh, please go away. Please go away. This movie reinforces to me how far away from this world I have been living for so long now. Like out of the Bible Belt, out of Texas, living in L.A., like Almost none of my friends are religious. I mean, I have some religious friends, but they're not like super, you know, um, evangelical Christy. But like when he first lifted up his sleeves, I thought because of the world I live in, I was like, oh my gosh, he like had a suicide attempt. Like, Because <laughs> it's like on his wrist and it's this like vertical cut mark that's right. like yeah. all scarred and healed over. And then it took me a minute and the... <laughs> Like, and then I was like, oh, is that supposed to be like stigmata? But isn't that in their hand? Like, why do they always show it in their hands? Was it supposed to be in the wrist? It's supposed, it's supposed to be in the hands, right? I thought it was supposed to be in the hands. But also that wouldn't work biologically. Right. Your hands would just rip down. Yeah, so exactly. it does make sense that they would do it in the wrists, like from a biology. But they don't care about biology, no. do they? It's good science. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no. Well, the, but, so that, but that's been an interesting transition to watch, right? Like as Christians have realized very slowly that no, there's no goddamn way you could crucify by somebody through the hands that they slowly have moved the stigmata to the wrists, which is so weird because uh. it was such an iconic, the hole in the hand was such an iconic image in, yeah. for, for Jesus forever and ever. But they have largely moved away from that. And that seems like a big move that they haven't really talked about. But I, I thought that this was like getting woke for a second where he's like, 
I've seen pain, like all of this, you know, torture that I have to witness really has caused me to like be on the brink. And I had a pretty serious suicide attempt. But then I was like, wait, what am I doing? (laughs) (laughs) Your brain's creating a better movie just to survive. (laughs) Oh, God. And then there's this moment where he says, and by the way, you totally made the right choice not looking in that bedpan. That was, it was super fucking gross. Super fucking gross. <laughs> yeah, it's weird that they didn't show us what's in the bedpan because showing icky pictures is kind of the whole anti abortion movement's thing. I was surprised. But it also flies in direct contradiction with it being a sweet little baby, right? This is what I'm so confused about. Like, is it a sweet baby or is it a gross monster? <laughs> like, you right, gotta pick yeah. a side. Well, but so the reason that they didn't show it to it, let's be super clear. The reason they didn't show it to us is because they wanted this movie to be available on Amazon, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. Meanwhile, yeah, yeah. they'll rent a giant poster truck with fetus tissue all over the side, drive through major oh, yeah. cities with it. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah, they you. don't care about that. Right. But I liked her. Her reaction was like, why would you leave it in the hallway? You're literally the fucking janitor, man. <laughs> Clean that shit up. Also, you're a deity. I don't know. There's a lot of ways around this. But again, this argument is so fucking stupid because I could also use the same ew, that's gross argument against fucking colonoscopy. Yeah. Right. I just any any a lot of medical shit's gross. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. All right. So now it's time for us to meet Deshaun because Lucretia really hadn't hit the racism quota that we've come to expect from pure flicks movies. It's rough. Well, Deshaun, he's interesting to me because it's like they wanted to be really racist with him. Like his his concept was really racist, but then yeah. he actually is a pretty good actor and is like right. like a normal <laughs> human being. And so like there's humanity in Deshaun and like nothing about him is caricatured, like except for how he's written on paper. Right. You know what yes. I mean? Yeah. Right, yeah. But like he refused, it's almost like the actor was like, yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> he's like, you right. call right. me Deshaun. Well, but like, <laughs> but he's actually like, really thoughtful and it's like is my music too loud i'm sorry my music's too loud like can i get you anything to eat <laughs> well to be so, to be super clear here the actor that played deshaun and the actor that played lucretia both of them brought so much more to this fucking movie than what yes. they were given in the script yes. right like yes. they were the really the two standouts which is the sh- a shame because they were obviously the most caricatured in the script but absolutely yeah, yeah. Mm. and they were written to be these bad people like they were actually written i think though they they were written to have an arc they were written right, to be to, yeah. which is the classic like white colonial um viewpoint right it's like they were written to be like the savages that were tamed like the people that early on oh, were like yeah. poor and like un, unwieldy and unruly and they came from the bad parts of town and they like you know oh i've been here a hundred times and i'm getting my free abortion with my punch card but then like i'm gonna find the light and in doing that, I'll be like the wise mammy character. Like that's yeah. really what they did with them. Oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. This they, is like Rudyard Kipling Jesus. Yeah, yes. yeah. They go yes. full fucking white and delights them by the time it's over. Yeah, so, and mm-hmm. and to really underscore <laughs> that, there's a point where like she's like talking. You know, Deshaun pulls up. Jesus is out there talking to Allison, and she says, "So what's up with this?" And he's like, "Oh, I've been talking to this guy a little bit." And we glance over, and he's sitting in the car. Right, Jesus has also been talking with Deshaun, and we see him like doing his black people dancing impressions. Yeah, he's like, mm-hmm. he's like dabbing or something. Like, I can't really work it out, but like not quite. <laughs> yeah. No. It's bad. <laughs> and like, and they're listening to like not real music either. It's like, um, you know, it's like the free music. Yeah, it's an Apple loop. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right. Also, right. Yeah. most importantly, this Deshaun character who will be a good guy has arrived at this abortion clinic to break in and prevent his girlfriend from getting an abortion. <laughs> yeah. He is a good character in this movie. This movie will celebrate him. Yes. And he's also parked in a fire lane. By the way, <laughs> he just stops like he just stops right in fuck? front of the door and just gets out as if that's his own personal parking. There space. were all of these open parking spaces. <laughs> yeah, I, I was more it. offended by the parking than anything else in this scene. Yes. Thank you. Yes. OK. <laughs> yes. All right. But also, but yeah, it, it's absolutely this guy. We watched the Jesus character stand there and beam the whole time that Deshaun walks up to the abortion clinic and says, I'm here to drag my girlfriend and my baby out of there. You ain't killing my baby. Yeah. This is a good guy. 
It's a reverse John Q. He's preventing <laughs> medical care like John Q. <laughs> and thinks he's the good guy. And of course, they make him talk like that. And you can tell it's so awkward yep. for the actor. He's like, I be here for me, baby. Like, he's oh, so he keeps slipping into so pirate rough. and leprechaun. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, who writes this shit? God. <laughs> uh, and by the way, Allison has this like weird willingness and even anxiousness to be part of their argument. Yes. Oh, on it's the insane. Sean's side, no less. <laughs> yes. Yep. It's insane. She does this weird side talk with Jesus the entire time. <laughs> yeah. You're commenting on the noble savages. They might as well turn to David Attenborough and have him be like, oh, <laughs> no, you guys are fucking bad. ritual. Oh, you guys are racist. <laughs> Get out of here. God. <laughs> yep. And also, do you guys. Do you guys notice that Jesus is the embodiment of the fundamental attribution error? Like, so this is a cognitive bias, like an important cognitive bias, wherein we tend to overemphasize situational stuff when it relates to us mm -hmm. and underemphasize personality-based explanations. And then it's the opposite when we talk about other people. So it's like with the pandemic, right? Like everybody's hoarding toilet paper because they're all selfish and assholes. But then when I like need to get an extra thing of toilet paper, it's because I was the good guy who just like didn't stock up and now I'm right. running out. Mm -hmm. Like this yeah. is a very common <laughs> thing that we do. And basically the whole time, Jesus is like, all the bad shit that happens in the world is because of you. I'm only responsible for the good stuff. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, wait, what? And, and she even brings up shit like cancer, right? Yeah. Like she brings up like cancer and tsunamis. And it's like, no, no, you guys do that with your free will. We do the <laughs> cancer and the tsunamis with our free will. Yep. Are you sure? And he's like, no, remember the apple, the apple thing with the apple. Remember Shouldn't the lady? Shouldn't have stolen that guacamole Aren't... from Whole Foods. I caused the tsunami. <laughs> but then they still, they still try to make him like semi-woke and like somehow the like, there's going to be like a relevance that like the cool people are going to get where he's like, you know, it wasn't really an apple. Yeah, like, right. Like, because that's like what the skeptics would say, you know, <laughs> like the scientists would say that. You know, like, oh, I'm not really you. just some guy on a throne on a cloud somewhere. <laughs> it's a quince. Get your facts straight. The Bible <laughs> makes sense now. <laughs> All right. And now, and now, okay, this is such a bizarre moment. She believes that he's Jesus now. She's got this all figured out. And she decides that she wants to play 20 questions with Jesus. Now, oh, I love this. I immediately this start writing on, in my notes. I've got some good ones. I'd ask about the eyeball worms first or whatever. And then she starts fucking nailing it. Yeah. yeah. She has some good questions. Yeah. Her first question out of the gate is, why do you hate gay people? To which she goes, man, it's man. It's the best. He says, I don't hate gay people. I don't hate people no matter what they do. Murder, kill, murder, rape, rape, murder, murder. Anyways, I don't Be hate gay, gay people. Yeah, what? Exactly. <laughs> and then she goes, she goes, why do you let African children starve? And he's like, ah, oh, you guys really, if you think about it, there is food. I them. am rubber and <laughs> you, my you, child, what? are glue. You guys didn't steal so much guacamole from the Whole Foods. Maybe there wouldn't be so many droughts. No, he's Africa. literally like, that was Obama. <laughs> <laughs> he's born in Kenya. He had plenty of time to deal with that African food crisis. <laughs> Obama! She's nailing the questions. She's just she's just missing the follow-ups. Yeah, she's kind of yeah. letting that stuff slide. She's like, oh, yeah, yeah that, that really calms my curiosity. Oh, we did, we did steal the guacamole from yeah. Whole Foods. No, that is true. <laughs> she asks, well, why'd you make cancer? And he's like, oh, they vote for me. Oh, hey, you, mean, you meant literal cancer. Tough one. And then we get my favorite of the 20 questions. What was it like to be crucified? To which the answer is, it was like all the rapes and murders and the Holocaust put together. <gasps> and, and he even goes like, yeah, fucking that Mel Gibson movie didn't even come close. It was way worse than that movie. It was so much. What so a much fucking worse. narcissist. And also, then she does this <laughs> weird thing where she's like, okay, now I just want to ask you like curiosity. Like she's like, you've proven to me that you're God and you've also proven to me that God has no responsibility in this world. So <laughs> now I just want to like get to know you personally. Yeah, now yeah. we're going to do a fucking tiger beat interview. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> 
<laughs> and like, why is his favorite book or movie To Kill a Mockingbird? It was movie. Oh. That was their example of a great Baffling. movie was To Kill a Mockingbird, but to also, be clear. But also, To Kill a Mockingbird stands for everything these people don't. Right, yes. everything. Like, it's the weird, it's like they were like, what do the liberals like? You guys get your Bob Yule, right? You don't understand that you're Bob Yule in this scenario, idiots? The saddest one of these, though, is when they ask, she asks him his favorite song, and his answer is, Jesus loves me, this I know. These motherfuckers couldn't think of a better religious song than yeah. Jesus Loves Me, This I Know. Amazing Grace. I love that song. Yeah, yeah there Come are on. a lot of great songs out there. Absolutely. Yeah. Ave Maria. How about the one about a smile? That's a great one. But like, also, they, they don't seem to recognize what a ridiculous asshole they just made Jesus, right? Because they're like, greatest movie ever. Ben-Hur, favorite book, the one about me. Favorite song, the one about me. Favorite historical moment, that time I. Like, you're an asshole. He's yeah. Trump. And also, they make, him, <laughs> they make him with the song, you're right, the Jesus Loves Me song. It just also, it's like he's an asshole, but it just goes back to the pedophile thing again. Right. I can't help to imagine him like in a windowless van with like candy and then like, come little baby. Like there's just something really gross about it. And then I think again in this scene, he says the thing about his hand forming the the baby. Yes. Like inside yep. of her body. Like he's very graphic about it. He's like, my hand is inside of you forming this. <laughs> oh, and you're like, God. ugh. She says, why don't you zap all the bad people? And he's, he says, well, you know, I'd have to start with you. You did steal that guacamole from the whole thing. Yeah. She's like, okay, why can't you tell the difference between a fucking mass murderer and somebody who looked at a woman with lust in their goddamn heart? There's the question. And he's like, I can't tell the difference between nails and all the rapes and the Holocaust. So, you know, yeah. my metrics are all the fucking off. I'm a confused guy. You oh, know, I the say. people in the Philippines do this for fun. His argument is that he's bad at Jesus saying because he's like, <laughs> hey, she's like, why aren't you going and doing this hard stuff? And he's like, I thought I'd start with you who has like not that much sin. Like you're right. like a pretty good chick. And this is like the one thing that you're like on the fence about. So I thought I'd hang with you instead. Cause like, this seems like an easy win. Like this will keep my like hit rate high. Okay. As long as we're talking about low hanging fruit though. Exactly. Remember, um, I remember our, the passion. You know, we were talking about that a second ago. Why'd you make Mel Gibson? Why would you make that? <laughs> oh, you got me. I'm just the you know janitor here. That, that's a mulligan. That one is a mulligan. I do not have an answer. She, you made Mel Gibson. Oh, what? God. She, she was asks fine about her fucking future with Rick. Like she's doing 20 questions. She says she got the question, the opportunity to ask questions of Jesus Christ. She's treating him like a fucking Ouija board. Well, yeah, like in Rick, Magic 8 Ball and she's yeah, eight years exactly. old. Like, is Johnny going to marry me? <laughs> <laughs> like one of those little foldy paper things or whatever. <laughs> All right, now pick a color. Yeah. Right. Play mash. Flash cuts to her and God playing mystery date. <laughs> <laughs> Mystery date. Is that the one with the phone, you guys? Yeah, that was the oh, one with yeah. the phone where you had phone sex with pre-recorded full-grown adults as a child. It does not <laughs> hold up. And do you remember um, the commercial for it? I what? still, it's burned into my brain. Yeah. The phone rings and she picks it up and she goes, it's Dan. Dan's my man. Yeah. That's like been in my head since I was like six years old. Do yourself a favor and YouTube the commercial for Mystery Date and you'll be like, oh, okay. So we were crazy until like 1999. Yeah, no, yeah, I was going to say, just just when, you, when you're thinking about when you're just crushed by how sexist this world is, just remind yourself, go watch that ad and realize we have moved, though. The needle has moved. <laughs> yeah. We had Mystery Day and Grape Escape. The fact that we're not all serial killers is a miracle. <laughs> First I want to smash it, then I want to cut it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And that was a really cool game. I was like jealous because my rich friends had Grape Escape. Yep. They had games that had like, they took batteries, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I had mismatched wood blocks that were scrap wood that my dad had. Well, so I had the games, I had the games that took batteries, but we didn't have batteries. So I would, 
I wanted so his bad. fucking blocks. I was just stuck playing mousetrap, and yes, it was missing pieces, so it didn't work. <laughs> it it, never it, doesn't, it didn't matter if it was missing never, fucking pieces. The hand the never put the goddamn, pushed the ball into the fucking no. tub, so it didn't matter if you had all the pieces. Broken, broken hand, every single one. Broken shit. Rube Goldberg mission. Well, this is, is, a, what it this is a fresher been. wound for Noah than it is for the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, so anyway. Now we have to have another moment with just Deshaun and Allison, apparently. So the way that they write Lucretia out of the scene for a second is she says, I'm going to go back into that abortion clinic and give that bitchy abortion Nazi lady with the cats a piece of my mind. Oh, yeah. And she talks about her cats. She's like, did you see her cat? What a cunt. And you're like, <laughs> like, what? I'm so sad we didn't get to see that conversation where Lucretia's just like, how dare you give me several free abortions and own cats? You know what? I just realized I don't have a lot here. I'm going to go back outside. <laughs> All right. I'm Lucretia. See you next Tuesday. Boing. That's my catchphrase. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Lucretia. <laughs> also, I love to go. Okay. There's this moment where. The actor playing Deshaun, right? He's hanging out with Allison and he's going through the lines that they've given him to say. And you can tell the actors like, why the fuck would I say that? Right. Because like at a certain point, his lines are like, like, I also like the music that is playing in my car. That's why I am playing it. <laughs> he turns into one of those racist lantern figurines at one point. He's like tea, <laughs> coffee, seltzer. <laughs> <laughs> Does he ask at one point? Why does choice always mean abortion and not the opposite? Like, have humans gone extinct? What? <laughs> Did I miss it? Also, there's this great moment here. Again, just to, just to underscore how little Bruce thought through his own fucking script. There's a moment where Lucretia comes out and she's like, all right, I'm ready to leave now. Let's go. And she turns to Allison and says, you need to come to my baby shower, hon. And then they don't exchange any additional information. And she leaves. Yeah, she's like, call me. All right, yeah, like, no, I'll look for Black Lucretia in L.A. I'll, I'm sure I'll find you. I'm sure it'll be pretty easy. I'll I thought that the... was a great blow off on Lucretia's part. She was like, oh, you're coming to my baby shower. We have to get together. Just, uh, yeah, just yeah, yeah, talk to you about They get like a, a block away in Lucretia's movie and she turns to Deshaun and says, yeah, that lady's been talking to invisible janitors all day. I've been trying to get the fuck away from her. I'm still going to have the abortion. I just left because, you know, can't. <laughs> me an excuse to get the fuck away All right. from her. Tweet me at Lucretia later. But then the sad thing is, she probably actually could find her. All she'd have to do is go on Instagram and look for the Lucretia that has like <laughs> selfies and an abortion. Oh clinic. yeah, right. No, if, you, if you Google abortion selfies, she'll yeah, come right like, up. Like, oh, that's her. I recognize right. that empty fish tank in the background. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so they drive away. She looks back at her texts. And Rick has texted, and, and his text just is like, done yet? Because I've been at this fucking Papa John's for like 45 minutes, and they're starting to look at me funny. You know? <laughs> no, yeah, he literally is like, do you want a pizza? And yeah. then her whole thing is like, do I erase this text or not? As if that makes any difference in anybody's world. Like, she's yeah. not <laughs> trying to decide if she wants to erase Rick. Like, you know, delete <laughs> right. entry. Or del she wants to decide if she wants to erase the text that says, do you want a pizza? Which, by the way, she's obviously an inbox zero because the whole time before that, she's looking at her phone. There are no messages. Well, that's right. it. She must delete every message. Yeah, yes. exactly. So it's not even a decision. <laughs> yeah, right. But the, here's the fucked up thing about it again, because Bruce isn't thinking through. He's just going to message like four minutes later and going, hey, did you get my earlier message about the <laughs> yeah, pizza exactly. or whatever? Like, I mean, if she messaged back, you know what? Fuck you. Then, like, there's some closure there. Exactly. But, but I mean, have the pizza before you break up, at least, right? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah exactly. Might there. as well get some Papa John's out of it. Maybe, maybe not Papa John's, but... Like, <laughs> the garlic yeah. sauce is good. If it was pizza. So, yeah, and then fucking abortion Nazi lady comes out, and she's just like, tell me we didn't lose Allison, too. Damn it, I'm at 4,999. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Like, they're going to force her to do it. Like, like she's at the top of a slide at Action Park, and she's walking <laughs> at it, like... <laughs> Scared baby Heath. And he, he's like, no, I waited on this long line. I'm going to step off to the side. And they're like, no, you have to go or you lose your spot. Come on. No, you got to go now. And then, oh, my God, this is the worst fucking part of the goddamn movie. This is the part where 
pedo Jesus gets on his hands and knees and starts screaming at her like, your baby wants to live. She wants her mommy to want her to live for mommy, baby, <laughs> baby, mommy, mommy. It's so bad. Oh, God, that was disturbing. The most intellectual the argument ever gets. <laughs> That's like the creepy part where it either goes like end movie or like it turns into a porno where he just starts like breastfeeding. Like, <laughs> like, really creepy about him on his knees. Oh. Like saying mommy over and over. You came up with such a better movie so many times. <laughs> I can't get this image out of Oh, I know you made him squeak. It's always, it's, it's something about badge of honor when you make Heath squeak. It's really, really <laughs> Oh, God. And there's a moment here where Allison is like, wait, wait, can you force me to look at the fetus again, the CGI fetus again? Because, like, you know, if they just would do that with medically unnecessary state-mandated ultrasounds, I bet it would make all the difference. <laughs> yeah. So we, we see the fucking CGI fetus one last time. This is the one where it looks us in the eye with the creepy ass fucking high buds. Oh, oh God. I wanted it. I wanted it to monologue and have Morgan Freeman's voice. Well, I'll tell you, my mommy went on not to have that abortion and Andy Dufresne. I had sex with my granddaughter. Oh, what? No. He did. He did. Absolutely not. All right. So then we cut back. <laughs> I wanted her to come out of the VR and just be like, nah, it's got Zika. So let's do it. Glow, let's do this. Get me in there. Because that's the thing. They do kind of leave you hanging. Like, yes, the baby starts singing Jesus Loves Me. Yes. And yes, she does say, mommy knows, my darling. Mommy knows. But you don't but, know. But hey, like she did that in the fucking, in the so flashback good. too. Yeah. Exactly. Mommy knows. I mean, just, and then the coat hanger. Like you have no idea how <laughs> you <know> how <laughs> Jesus <is>. Christ. <laughs> yes. Bad. Yeah, we see little, we see Jesus like walk up to yet another woman at the abortion <laughs> clinic. And then we hear the little, the little non-murdered baby singing as the credits roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. It's really creepy. Oh, geez. Okay. All right. So, and that's, that's how the movie ends. We, we literally hear a little baby singing, Jesus loves me this week, this, I know. And then we hear Allison's voice saying, mommy knows, little darling, I didn't murder you. And then that's it. That's it. It wraps there. I have to ask, cause I know we're going to see Bruce Marciano again. Any predictions where Jesus will be harassing people in the sequel? Uh, sheltering in place. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to say Jewish funeral. Oh, Ooh. all right. That's interesting. That's well, I interesting. Need, I need a little help. I need a little refreshment on like, what are the things that Christians hate most? Oh, gay wedding. There you go. Gay. Gay. Oh, you oh. I was about to say Jewish funerals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, they love those. Um, it's, it's the bris that yeah. they hate. It's the funeral they love. All right. Well, Kara. I cannot thank you enough for hanging out with us today. And also for all the guy, uh, the work that you and the guys are doing over on the SGU, you guys have been my go-to source for science information during the pandemic and everything. You guys have been doing really amazing work there. So th thank you a ton for that on behalf of every, all of the all of the show's listeners. Oh, thank you so much. Woo! And thanks for getting me out of here with 10 minutes to spare so I can jump over and do a live stream on SGU. Oh, right Ooh. on. Right on. <laughs> Check it out, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to do it for our review of Allison's Choice. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to lure you back. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Assassin 33 AD. When a Christian scientist invents time travel, Muslims steal okay. it to go back in time and kill, oh my God. And kill Jesus. <laughs> what? But Jesus turns out to be a little bit more than they can handle. Oh, my God. All right. <laughs> so... With that to look forward, sometimes when I say that, I don't really mean it. This time I mean it. <laughs> so with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 245 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Kara Santa Maria for suffering alongside us this week. And a perhaps even a huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to get yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Alias, Citation, Needed, Skeptocrat, and D&D, and D &D, available wherever else podcasts live. 
If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick with we'll Drops on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright, Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work harder, earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club Club. Satanic Doctor had a great life with her cats and money. <laughs> Allison went to a different Planned Parenthood two towns over. Coronavirus was janitor God's bad. That one's on him. Put it on the board. <laughs> and Mel Gibson. I'm thinking Mel Gibson. And Mel Gibson. Couple. <laughs> Couple. Gasped by the I, way, when they said her name. So I was like, so no. here's wow. I Is this already, an homage to Lucretia Mott? No, it's not. No, it's not. I had a I had the IMDB page open before the movie starts, you know, look at so I could like look over stuff and I saw that there was a character coming up named Lucretia, and I'm like, oh no. And then, you know, like the intro for that character shows up, and I'm like, yeah. oh god, that's Lucretia, isn't it? <laughs> That's every fucking <laughs> argument in this movie. I, was, I, would, I kept being so blown away because Allison kept me. I would go like, well, I'd ask Jesus. Oh, no, that, that's pretty much what I'd ask Jesus. OK, well done. <laughs> How's he going to do? No, he's just no, nope. just gonna yeah. just gonna jingle some keys around. It's like they, it's like he was trying to be woke by making this like the modern argument, but then he, it was like the most thin response every time. Why do you hate oh. gay people, Jesus? Ah, yeah. <laughs> Why do you hate gay people? <laughs> All he's right. Second only to him being like, come on, like you weren't born not being able to pronounce an S. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, interstitial. Check out my parachute backpack. What? <laughs> <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.